That sounds like me. Yeah, I'm the same way. I taught myself immunity to gore. Once they promote me, I'll implement my forced removal plan. Oh, that sounds delightful. When you need help, I'm in. Alrighty then, so we are back with Bract. All kinds of amazing things upcoming now as we uh, look at our story journal before moving on. The final chapter lies before us, victory or death. Uh, we just finished forging, uh, forming the pact. Uh, so first of all, in forming the pact, you can see we've got this new item here. It's called Ton's Dud. It says, Ton designed this bomb that failed to detonate as planned. So be careful. I don't know really what that means. Are we carrying the uh, volatile explosive with us in our hands right now? Um, but yes, yeah, so uh, we delivered bad news about Ton to Sira. As a packed medic, she deals with death every day, but that didn't make Ton's heroic sacrifice any easier to hear. In her grief, she blamed me for Ton's death and ran off straight into a throng of undead. I was able to rescue her, but she remained furious and refused to forgive me. I can only hope our eventual victory over the dragons will make Sira see that Ton's bravery saved countless lives and helped secure Tyria's freedom. Uh, and then we started chapter eight the final chapter this is it guys what and then the my story category is done the first saga if you will uh victory or death temple of the forgotten god the lagos sire al rajid swore to honor a mysterious oath she made to Traherne in the past acting on her information we decided i would join her in investigating a sunken temple off of oz coast Indeed, this is the sunken temple of a god who rebelled against the others, uh, tried to get, keep the bloodstone magic on the races of Tyria, and uh, was cast down for it. So, this is really cool. This was one of the most exciting, like, lore bomb moments for me when I started playing. But we have uh, kind of a difficult thing ahead of us here. To get to that sunken temple, we are going to be going towards Ore. And I think it's time, as Trahan has pointed out, for us to do an invasion, no? So, if you look around, we have a ton of the Pact's finest all over the harbour here. There's a scary ship out there. There are three assaults to Ore. Today, Bract is going to go for it. We are heading across Tezeto Bay that we've heard so much about. This is Tezeto Bay here. Uh, to Ore itself. The, by the end of this video, you will have seen our first foot footfalls on the place. Uh, beyond, you know, uh, a little bit of transportation magic with a certain mirror a long time ago. So, there are three assaults. Uh, Bract is going to be dealing with the northern one, which is one of the naval assaults. So, we're not actually going to worry about that bone ship. Uh, what we're going to try and do instead is move out of the fort this way and back up north through the t uh, plinth timberland to uh, the places we've seen a little bit of before. Now, in theory, the there are dynamic initiated. events we can do. Uh, and hopefully everyone with the pact comes along with us now. There are events that we can do uh, to escort Doliax and stuff that come up here. Uh, but I don't really know when they'll spawn. I did try and wait around and see whether they'd be here. Because I think that'd be really cool. But they're not up right now. Well, mind you, actually, it looks like they are triggering. Look at that. Oh, it's perfect. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, this is uh, basically the start of the northern events. We're not actually under the effects of a meta, you'll notice right now. But there are various things going on. So the Razor Slide Bivouac. Now, this is where we met before with various packed forces who were doing logging and whatnot. Well, they can get occasionally attacked by undead. Uh, I have mentioned this already, but the Straits of Devastation and all the maps beyond have no hearts. They just have lots and lots of events. Basically, the de developers realized that dynamic events could be at the heart of the game. And when you get to this end game stuff, they're really just trying to flex their muscles and show it off in every way they can. Almost every single place you can find in these upcoming maps owned by the Pact can equally be owned by Zaitan and the Risen. And that's exactly what we see here. It's all miasmic and nasty. Once we clear this event out with this last Risen dying here, it will become nice again. Oh, no, that's not the right Risen. Hold on. Risen remaining two. Where are they? we got to kill them all down good here because they're spawning super fast. Jesus. Okay, so, uh, yeah, let's clear it out. A lot of these events I do want to show you and the dialogue at the start and the end of them. But, uh, so here you go. But a lot of them could become quite long, so you might find I cut out large chunks of them. All of our new recruits are now dead, if I may point out. Correction. We're dead, then reanimated. Again. What a singularly inappropriate moment you've chosen to assert your pedantry. Pedantry? You were the one who corrected them. That's enough from both of you. Show some respect for our fallen. Kindle fire. Send a bird to Trinity. And let them know we need more personnel. 
Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. So they're moving on. Now you notice one unfortunate thing here. Some of the NPCs are becoming invisible. I may as well take this time to show it off. We've got a ton of players around us. A ton. There's loads of members of the pack. And what that means is uh, it can drag our frame rate down very low. So the devs offered different options in the settings here called culling settings. Most new people, and I know a lot of new people watching this series should learn from this, uh, one of the most new people end up tanking their FPS down really hard and they think that the game is super poorly optimized But the truth is in a lot of ways It's just the devs give you a ton of control over how much stuff is on screen So what I've got is my character model is currently set to low Which means that even though everyone's around me sometimes it will make them invisible to save my frame rate And you can maybe toggle that higher if you like but make the quality of the characters lower to bring the NPCs and whatnot back, even though you're standing near a big Zerg. And so I'll try and do that. But there you go. So that's one event with the bivouac. I would speak to some of the NPCs. They talk about how it's basically a training base and it's a... Um uh, a staging ground for future attacks, which seems like a terrible thing to pair together. But uh, we'll move on because there was an escort going on as well. I think it ran this way. And many more of our forces here are doing it right now. This is a Doliac where we're sending supply lines up north. We're not under the effects of a meta, as I said. Oh, look at all the Risen that they've been killing here. This is awesome. We're not under the effects of a meta. But this will take us to a meta, all right? And that's what's important. You can really see supplies move all the way out from the fort to help flip and swap all the different locations for me. across the map. And it goes the whole way through. It's really a beautiful thing they do here uh, in the, all the different things that can be happening all at once. You know, we got this squad here. There could be another squad of players here and another squad as we actually push through and flip no stuff in our favor. Treasure. So, uh, yeah, that's just that obey. Here's this uh, launch pad I was talking about over there. Uh, there are, there's a mysterious little cave and tunnel here. This is not to the bloodstone fragment I showed you before. Uh, but these explorers are working with it. They say, we board this tunnel to travel between the coast and avoid the undead. Uh, the trick is to make sure the tunnel itself so stays clear. And we say, well, where does the tunnel lead? Well, it opens out near Oceanside Ordnance. It gives us reasonably safe passage to transport winded soldiers to be treated at Oceanside when the copters aren't available. Copters, guys! Look! Oh, we're starting to hear about these. More packed technology. And so, yeah, you can walk through. If we were a little bit quicker here, and I'm really trying to wrap this information out fast so we can catch up. Uh, we could have actually done the escort through here. You can escort the dolly act. That's what some of the other people up ahead of us just moments ago were doing. And there's a little bit of dialogue as they move through. You notice we're in this cool place. It's called the underbelly. Uh, kind of creepy sounding. And as we move forward to the other side, you'll see we're just at the end of the escort here now. They're just getting up to a packed base. The pack 7,000 golem along its northern supply route. Here we got even more dialogue. This Arcanist is a char. A char with a diamond priory. Kind of a weird idea. I can't believe I have to stand it like some sort of guard. I have work I have to do. Instead, I get to wait out here and stab any risen who walk up. This is vigil work. Stop whining, we say. It wasn't important work. You wouldn't be assigned to it. Uh, but isn't this passageway necessary? I suppose. We do use it to transport the wounded to Oceanside Ordnance safely. I just wish I could be doing more. So here's what's beautiful about Guild Wars 2, right? As an MMO, as a format, as dynamic events work. That's not just flavor for this area of the world that they've just, ta you know, tackily written in there. He's actually correct. He's talking about transported stuff through. That's what we can see that just happened. Uh, it's kind of awesome. So we move on up. And we come to another one of the satellite bases. This one known as Signal Peak. So Signal Peak, we will actually have a reasonable amount of story to do before the end. Not necessarily here with Bract right now. We've got a scholar. Soldiers up and down this coast are dealing with the undead. If we each do our part, we may get through this alive. Uh, and right now, it looks like it's fine and it's safe, which is nice. Uh, courage, guide your hand. We have Crusaders. Look, we've got our hands full at the moment. Crusader Blake's in charge here. Why don't you talk to him? We can sort of wander around. We uh, will be returning here later, so we don't have to spend too long doing the dialogue with this. But you'll notice that it's actually just full of wounded, just everywhere. And there's loads of dialogue you can get from it. I'm busy right now. Maybe Commander has a moment to address your concerns. Okay, fine. You can see there's just all this detail, all these people sitting around. There's elixirs around that can make us invulnerable if we like. Uh, the various medics will speak to us. Every patient we lose is another sleepless night for me. I thought I'd seen everything, but this place keeps proving me wrong. Where do all your patients come from? Anywhere in Northern Ore. It's hard to be safe from the Risen down here, no matter what part you play in the war. We're not even across the waters yet, and this is how people are feeling. Some must fight so that all may be free. Your dedication is inspiring, we say. And he says, thank you. It's good to hear your hard work is appreciated. These soldiers are putting themselves in danger to protect Tyria from the horrors of ore. I owe it to them to do my best to heal them. We can come up and the commander's even up here as well. But what I want to point out, and Blake doesn't have time for us for what it's worth. Vigilance, honor, duty above all. 
Try not to get in the way. We're busy propping packed soldiers back up on their feet to return to the fight. What is this place? What's it look like? A circus? You've bumbled into the packed field hospital. We're triaging casualties here. Do you mind? Sorry, moving along. What I want to point out to you all is all of these NPCs and the areas here, all of them can die, can be taken out, can be knocked out by the Risen, and this whole place can be instead be like a dead stalked land, right? With the walls destroyed and the tents burned down and whatnot. Like, it all can dynamically update, and that's what's fascinating. What's, what would be kind of cool is to do the escort and then um, you flip this place, but they would never send supplies out to it if the Risen already own it. So yeah, but here, check it out. You will see we're now in range of a meta. The Northern Invasion of Ore, the first of three. Ballisticians are repairing the Stentor Cannonade's Golem Cannons. Soldiers are trying to keep control of Stentor Cannonade from the Risen. And as we continue along the road up north here, with more people around, and this is so cool, everyone's cleared out of all the Risen, it's amazing. Uh, we hit Signal Peak Waypoint, and we're at Stentor Cannonade, with an event nearby. So, the start of this meta, is to keep this place well defended while three enormous Asuran cannons are charged. And so we got a ton of players to do this. The idea is this blue ring you see around with these lightning cannons for the packs and stuff. You're supposed to go out on the beach and stop the undead from ambling out of the Orion waters so that we can establish this foothold. The plan of the Asura here, and I guess the Char, look at this, there's a cool blending of Asura and Char technology we see at this bit. Like this is very Asuri on the back and it's very Chari on the front, right? Uh, these cannons are going to launch golems. Not so like we could go by boat, we could go by sub, we could go even we've got an airship, you notice. The idea of this is a really cool high fantasy one, which is basically we're launching golems through the air to land immediately an assault on the other side. And what you gotta understand, guys, is across the whole map there's like this idea of this assault, while another one's going on and another one's going on, and each has a different flavour of how the pact and how Johan is organizing things. So we can speak to the NPCs. Keep those ambulatory corpses at bay while I endeavor to rebuild these golem cannons. And you see that they're here. Uh, and the reason this is all broken is because the undead have taken it out at some point and we've got to re recap it and push it back through. Every single one of these locations we cap, just like this one earlier and the other one even earlier than that, they all eventually will be attacked by big dynamic events of Risen flooding them. And if players aren't there to defend them, they fall. So you kind of got to keep spread out and stay defending. The idea of being rewarded for staying back was something the devs never really figured out though, unfortunately. So you never really get that sense. That's it. Keep it up. Our cannons are good as new. Excellent. Send the golems over to Brass Claw Landing. I want an army waiting for us when we reach the beachhead. You got it, boss. You can count on us. Everyone, into the water. Stay with the submarines. They'll escort us across to Orr. So check it out, the submarines! Yeah, the char dealing with these! Oh my god, Tyrix would be in his element here. Fight with Valor. And he says, follow me. And as we come out, this is so cool, guys. This is one of the most cinematic things you'll see in the open world for the original release of the game. It's to sink the Risen Armada blocking the submarines. No, we've been cut off by an Orion Armada. My Heavy hammer, change of plans. Aim everything you've got at those ships. Take out those ships so our submarines can get through. So check it out. This is real, guys. This is not story spoofing. This is a ship, a massive flagship, and multiple smaller ships just appeared. These are our submarines that we actually have to defend, and the Risen will swim in at us trying to take them out. We have to defend our subs while coming over to the flagships and taking these out here, or the smaller ones. And as you fight them, they actually do break. They're all dynamic real objects that can fall and be shattered right before your very eyes here. Now, with all these players, I'm sure we'll blow them up super quick, so you've got to watch closely. But look at this, and it's so loud, it's crazy. So it's a really interesting idea here that we actually have underwater combat in quite a big, significant part of the assault on ore. And this is it, guys. We're just going to swim, just straight up swim and escort our subs. So here's the flagship. It's already at 50% health. The submarines, we still have five remaining. And uh, it looks like everyone's going to do that perfectly well. I don't even have to help. I was going to go underwater and fire some grenades, but I'm pretty sure that we've got this sorted. Look at this. So there you go. The ships are down. And watch the subs start actually moving now. Like, look at this. Oh, man, I love the Northern Invasion. I really love the Northern Invasion. And uh, so as we move forwards, Brack obviously has his own ulterior uh, consideration too at the same time. We're now out in the waters, guys. And if you look very closely, the Temple of the Forgotten God is down here. But just look at this. Look in the borders of ore. 
out in the depths where the waters are now, you'll actually see great monuments and architecture and structures long since drowned by the waves that only Zaitan is really familiar with at this point. I can assume, as he uh, plunders them with his undead minions. You know, the lost wreckage of an ancient civilization. One of the beautiful things about Ore really always was that it was underwater. Uh, and then when Guild Wars 2 came out, obviously, it all rose up. So I feel like the devs wanted to at least deliver somewhere at the core of Guild Wars 2 that sense of exploring ancient sunken ruins. Um, and they give that to us as we're actually in the fringes of the place. Eventually we will be on land again, but you still get that taste of what ore as it was submerged might be like because of all these great circular, uh, awesomely sized structures and things around. Um, so yeah, it's really kind of awesome. In fact, if we move over here, you'll see we're at a place called the Royal Forum. Look, the Royal Forum Waypoints. And you'll notice it's a very special kind of waypoint that's got all kinds of blinking mechanisms and stuff. Packed troop connection, unestablished. Waypoint confirmed, unsafe. Shutting down in three, two, pssst. Too bad the waypoint isn't available into the packed troops mech here. So you'll see that this is a contested waypoint. As we flip stuff, we open up waypoints to use. So this actually opens up further ex uh, exploration in theory for players. Now the truth is people kind of bypass it these days with mounts and by skipping to the later maps and stuff. But the idea really is, unless you fight for ore, you cannot just port to ore. Uh, and they never really went super far with it. But yeah, you'll see a lot of the waypoints kind of are the, the special variety that Traherne and the pack can communicate. This orange type and shut down at a moment's notice until the areas are clear. Uh, so yeah, look over here. There's a statue to Melandru. The, the Orians were godly people. And Melandru's statue is here. We can actually commune with it. It's defended by uh, Orians, but we, the pact, have cleared them out. This statue's sweet face inspires relaxation and contemplation. Uh, which would be very nice in an area like this. So we can continue collecting these. Now that we're level 80, you might wonder what they're for. Don't worry. That will be answered when we get to the expansions. So, uh, yes, the state of the meta, by the way, is uh, it freezes for a moment at this point as everybody sorts things out. The uh, submarines move forward, and you can actually see we're looking out at a minefield uh, with more ships higher up. Once we get the order from our char buddies here, uh, we will actually swim forwards and we will continue with the event. But it can take a little while for the devs to figure that out. While that's uh, for the event, I guess, to figure that out. Uh, while that's going on, what I'm going to do is go north and I'm going to show you this place here. And we will actually get to the entrance of the temple. Uh, the the pack squad and co, co we will return to and continue with that event in a sec. Uh, I'll also note, by the way, most of the NPCs with that event our, uh, our order of whispers, actually. There's, this is like a big whispers assault. Again, the whispers dealing with naval and watery pursuits. Well, there's tons of whispers around. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. Over here, you find some more events. Not a part of the meta. You can tell because the UI does not have, like, that backing, kind of the orange backing to all of it. But there are other ones at this very prominent location here. This is where Sire wants us to come to. So, Explorer Rock or Scholar Roller is here. We need to free the crew members trapped inside risen clams way out in the depths. There's a ton of underwater stuff here. Really, this is the most pure underwater content the game has ever had. Expansions included. Because there's just such deep... I mean, look at how low down we are. And such vast open areas of the world. And there's all things to fight as you go through. There are all events to deal with. I mean, it's brilliant. These clams as well are quite special kind of creatures you don't find in many areas of the game. Actual killable risen undead crabs on the bottom of the... Uh, the water here and uh yeah you can free the pack from them as you move through uh swimming back over though this is the event i really care about rock and uh roller escaping from the plaza of the of lost wisdom uh so they're back behind us here and that's what this is that we had the the royal forum well this plaza here of lost wisdom now the god that this temple was to abaddon cast aside as he was he was the god of secrets so to call this the plaza of lost wisdom there we go we just unlocked it is really awesome the idea that people would once upon a time tend to this it was above ground the, the sun may have shone on it these you know knowledgeable magically inclined orions would have tended to this place and worshipped it and abaddon himself may have walked around here and now look at it just ruins at the bottom of the sea it's amazing guys so there the event finished I don't think we heard the dialogue, sadly, because they might have been quite far away. But yeah, that doorway there, Sire can help us go into. This is where we will start our in, uh, the next story quest, and we will actually go inside. It's really badass mission, guys. Uh, trust me. Uh, but yeah, so with that shown off, you'll see that the main meta is now propped. 
Uh, and our next job is to get through the minefield and more risen bone ships uh, lie ahead. So let's swim on over. And oh, it stays so cinematic. We're close now, by the way. We've been out in the oceans for a while. We're getting pretty, pretty near. So, uh, I'm kind of scared right now because I seem to be at the head of the group. <laughs> All the other players not really around right now. But uh, yeah, we've got Risen Mines, we've got uh, Bone Ships, and the idea is to get all of the ships down before our subs get taken out. So, moving up, obviously as Brax, heavy explosives, we can do our thing. We can drop our rocket turret here and that will just continue firing away at the ship above. Drop our minefields. Oh, there's something so perfect about this. Listen, we could be like an elementalist with water attacks or something here, but nothing quite matches the feeling. <gasps> oh my god! All right, that's how the mines work. <laughs> I need to get back. Uh, yeah, they explode and launch you into the sky. It's okay because you don't take full damage, but Bract, I really don't want to die. <laughs> the more players we have, the more that these scale up as events. So we really don't... Look, look, everybody's dying here. Oh dear. Maybe I should get Elixir R on. Maybe get the grenade kit. <laughs> I thought I was out of range of that mine. I really did. Okay, let's pull over. Yeah, the, the more players that are here, it makes the ships tankier, but it also makes the mines hit harder, so there's extra reason to be scared. Uh, honestly, I have strength in numbers right now, but if I tried to solo any of Zaitan's mobs right now, they would probably kick Brack's ass. Yes, we're level 80, but I haven't upgraded his gear for a while. And uh, yeah, it's kind of designed for large groups of people. Jesus Christ. Uh, people don't know what's doing the damage in chat either. Kind of scary. I'm going to stay back here while they just uh, break the ships. Uh, so let's see what these guys say. Sink that Orion fleet and watch out for their mines, she says. Shadow Striker here, the leader char. The, the same NPC we saw at the start of the meta. Sink them back to the seabed, he says. There you go. And he's happy that we sunk another ship. He'll probably have some dialogue when that other one breaks. Well done. Keep We've also got to run a bit of defense here. Um, to make sure our subs don't break. This one's almost destroyed. This one's pretty low. This one's pretty low. And this one. But it's okay. This one's pretty healthy as well. The more subs we have, the better for when the next event comes through. Uh, and that's kind of one of the beautiful things about really well-designed meta events. It stop until you breach the docks. Take the landing. There you go. Awesome. There you go. Br brilliant. All right. They've all g gone down and the subs move on. We swim along with them. Now, the game doesn't want us swimming too close to them. So, you notice it's like clipping me away every now and then. And that's pretty fair. More sunken ships. And so, we got all five subs here. Uh, I wonder if they had broken, we would it would actually have an impact on the next one here. Feedback Possibly. Probably, right? But here it is, guys. It's starting to get shallower. And we're now at a place called Brass Claw Landing. This is ore. Sounds kind of haunted, doesn't it? Sounds kind of not very nice, doesn't it? But uh, yeah, we are here. And not only do we get our subs coming in. You may have seen in the sky. Oh, I wish I could see one. Six feet tall. Damn, we might have missed it. These golems, the SV3296, if we watch closely, you can actually see them getting launched from the cannons on the other side of the water. They actually are coming from over there. They land, they hit here right as the subs hit here. We get to start claiming, oh, this is it. So uh, we basically have to keep the Orions out of this giant territory. Now, the more players that are here, the more dangerous this gets. We've almost got them beaten. So you want to have more players than undead and you can continue capping the territory until and it looks like we've done really well here. Quite a reward. Voila. We cap it. Where's the char? Where is he? Here we go. The landing is ours. We can't stay in a corrupted lighthouse right on top of My us. Lady. Don't you try to have away with ancient technology. I think I have some ideas on how to disable it. Let me investigate. Ah, <sighs> we make it. I would have preferred a more discreet approach to this shore, but we're here. We are indeed. Now that the landing is ours, we can start bringing in additional troops and supplies. Turn that hands on. I've managed to disable the lighthouse. Well done. Is it permanently out of commission? I can't be certain of that. Just another reason for us to keep alert. We could see a counterattack from the Risen at any moment. Including moderation. So look at this. Look at the tents being built, right? Look, we're actually establishing stuff. The submarines here are docked. 
things are actually being created. Now, that hint in the dialogue there about the... Uh, here you go. Here's a copter. A packed copter coming in. And this will actually drop reinforcements. Watch. The ladder comes down. And now that all these explorers and things come down with it, and they're all invulnerable, they're going to move on, and they're going to keep pushing into ore now. Something. Excellent work. Keep your forces here, and ensure the landing remains under packed control. I wouldn't have it any other way. We're counting on you. My squad will meet up with our other forces at the rally point. Good luck out there. This is it. Move. And look, they're off. I, this is so cool, guys. Um, so, but you'll notice now, it's really surreal. We're here. We're at all. We can't hardly get time to breathe and relax. You'll notice that this event, as those guys leave from the helicopter, that is a different meta, though. That is uh, called the Temple of Balthazar. That we are not doing today. There is a pack rally point further ahead. Other forces? Well, what about the other invasions, right? So... Uh, our forces are going to go off. They're going to go deal with that and actually penetrate a little bit further into ore. But just getting this first foothold is good enough for Night me. Our forces will hold this landing, but this was just one step of our invasion. Join up with the other troops. So there you have it, guys. Uh, you can get on the mortars. Like all these build all these things, like this mortar here that we can actually get on and fire and do things. The uh, tents and stuff, they weren't here until we actually captured it. There's kind of that weird suggestion of something That's to do with sorry. a lighthouse. Which is cool, but I guess the Priory deal with it without us having to do an event. And uh, yeah, we can move on. Most excitingly, probably, for a lot of players, is over here in this corner. At Brassclaw Landing, now in our favor, is a waypoint which we can utilize. So there you go. That is the Northern Invasion of Ore. And I think we did freaking awesome there, guys. We did really, really well. There's other map objectives and things that we can do out in the waters. But next for us is to go to the Temple of the Forgotten Gods. Oh, we're making progress on all fronts. Oh my god, that was kind of weird. I'll see you guys back over there. You can't lose the orb now! Keep them away from me! I'm glad we've got the dragon's attention. I want Zaitan to know the names and faces of those who will defeat it. Fort Trinity is secure for now, so if you have no objections, I'd like us to turn our attention to Siska. I know where she is. She's at the pack camp near Signal Peak. I'd like you with me when I confront her. I wouldn't miss a chance like that, sir. She's tried to destroy us both, and I will see her answer for it. Agreed. I'll wrap things up here, and then meet you near the Signal Peak camp. All right, here at the back of a dark and gloomy, scary night, back at this tunnel, moving north with Tyrix to finally confront and figure out what the hell is going on with Siska. So a quick recap, let's remember. Uh, we met a Siska who was upright walking around doing all kinds of stuff, deceived us with illusions into shelling a bunch of our own guys, convinced that they were risen. We did an investigation into finding out more about her, and found her corpse a long, 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 long way away up north in Ascalon. Now, Siska, the real Siska, seemed like a bit of a dodgy char, but uh, there's no real sign that she was actually around here to the south. So the question is, what was the thing we were looking at that deceived us originally? Hmm. Well, answers lie in waiting. I guess the other side as well is... We have uh, e evidence now demonstrated that Zaitan is employing mesmers to do dirty work against us. He had several mesmers, liches, that deceived people at Fort Trinity and uh, got the Asura shuts down. The Asura gates being such an important military, you know, asset for us. And uh, yeah, he, he kind of did some damage with that. He seemed pretty goddamn tricky. And it's a very cool, like, dark, sneaky side of a dragon that until now has just seemed like all it cares about is relentless assaults with zombies that I find really beautiful. You know, you take a, a menace that you mostly associate with complete brain dead assault zombies with then something like this is kind of badass of course we do know that zaitan gains control of whatever he corrupts and this it would be no exception so here we are we're at the uh, final step now delivering justice we're gonna meet Traherne up at this northern camp and again you'll notice on this arc that Traherne has so much influence and so much say because it's just such a big ticket item. This is definitely my favorite of the arcs by a long way. The pack needs every able-bodied soldier to help push the undead out of Stentor Cannonade. All right, well, that's all the way up the road. And hopefully some other members of the pack are doing that maybe right now. Hey, who knows? Okay, so delivery justice. 
Let's see what we got. Look at this concept art. Beautiful. Reminds me of the char, actually. And maybe a little bit of uh, script stuff. Just a little bit. But hey, we don't really like the script. All right, so what do we got? <clears throat> well, it's your hands here at the camp. And luckily, it's not flipped by the Risen. Obviously, here, now that we're in a personal story step, it won't integrate with the dynamic event. So I can just sit here like a nice little kitty cat forever. And it's not going to get assaulted. Uh, so a little bit of a weird incongruence again, which is why it's so much better in expansion story and stuff where they're not constantly using little instances to tell their story uh, because they can keep that integration between personal story and dynamic events and meta events free flowing at all times. And it's kind of a beautiful thing. But they're still just getting to grips with it here in the 2012 content. Uh, but hey, Tren, how's it going? This place looks packed. Welcome, Commander. Siska, or her impersonator, is here. Maybe now we'll get to the bottom of this. I've kept her former squad mates away so they don't tip her off. You and I will confront this imposter personally. Sure you want to be directly involved? Whoever Siska is, she targeted you. She targeted me too, but only to get a clear shot at you. I'm sure. The fact that she was after me makes this my problem. The Pact needs to see me handle it. And I need you by my side when I do. See, I love this because what was going on in Forging the Pact, he was trying to gain everyone's confidence, right? Uh, and you can kind of see how that doesn't go away just because the story step moves on. He still values that. Uh, so, yeah, let's move on up. Well, we've got lots of people around. Can, can't actually speak to them here. Uh, just people being tended to. Wounded being tended to by vigil medics. Priory. Can you imagine that? Well, who would you want? A vigil medic for your triage situation or a priory medic? I think I'd want a priory one, right? <laughs> but hey, they're mostly vigil. Okay, so uh, what we've got over here. I love how Johan also says that he's separated Siska from um, all of her other comrades. The idea that maybe they could also have been turned and corrupted too. But hey, all right, Siska, I see you all the way up here near where the corporal was before. You want to talk? Now, if we're wrong, she has every right to be mad at us. We did kill our own troops. I'm sorry, Marshal Treherne, but the commander has to go. I won't have anything to do with the failure who shelled my soldiers. The commander is here at my request, Tactician. Recent events have raised serious concerns about you. I've done the best I could in very difficult circumstances. Every soldier in my unit will vouch. I already spoke with them. They support what the commander has been saying. You're not quite yourself these days, are you? No, I'm better. I intended to quietly exploit my position until you were dead and your war lost, but now I'm forced to be direct. You're hard to kill, Treherne, but I'll keep trying until I get it right. Uh-oh. So we're right? Uh-oh. Behold me as I truly am. You claim to be Zaitan's creature, yet you speak and act as if untouched by its corruption. My will is Zaitan's. You and your troops will be his puppets. Beautiful. So here we go. We get Labwan the Deceiver and Orion Mesmer. And she looks awesome, very noble and whatnot. Uh, I'm not really sure you can read into her name as Labwan the Deceiver. But uh, you'll notice here as well, she actually looks completely different to the idea of what the other Mesmer was, that lich we had back at the forts. So it really does show there's a good range of different things and creatures that are capable of this kind of deceit. Um, so she is an Orion Mesmer that does actually use some pretty interesting skills, but they're all super tuned down here, like everything in the story. So the fight is uh, not much more than just beat the hell out of her. Uh, I do like how they give us all of the dialogue at the start, though, so we can listen to it and then fight instead of it triggering over and over and over in the fight, and if you kill her too fast, you miss it. Uh, but there you go. So Labwan goes down, and we're all good. At last, the impersonator is dead. Perhaps now the pack can conduct its war without Zaitan's interference and trickery. Zaitan's forces must consider the pack a serious threat. Why else would they be so determined to destroy its leadership and headquarters? I agree. They committed time and resources to crippling our alliance, but they failed. Now is the time to press our advantage before they regroup. We should start the invasion of Orr. It will be a long, hard road, but we will never have a better opportunity. I will begin the initial preparations. Stick close. Once I determine our strategy, I'll need you to execute the particulars. This is what we've been working for. 
From now on, we're taking the initiative. A united Tyria is stronger than any dragon. But look at this dialogue, guys. It's so good. That's such a great lead into why Chapter 8 now happens and the assault. Here we get even more bags of loot. Remember, guys, I'll be talking about these soon. Uh, well, in a few episodes, but the whole way through the series, we've been getting bags of loot for finishing every single mission, and they've just been building up. I do have a cool plan for them. Uh, but yeah, the story's so good, right? The lead-in to why Chapter 8 happens. Uh, it's kind of like two episodes, two arcs of this chapter. The, uh, this one and the one with the blue orb. One is to do with the assault on the leadership. The other is to do with the assault on the, the fort and the blue orb to defend it. And then you kind of get one of our mini assaults, the ton arc, which feels kind of extra into the side, which I actually kind of like I like that asymmetry there I don't like the feeling that you know all the arcs have to be perfectly balanced all the time uh, and yeah you know this one's so so good the way it leads in uh, we can obviously end by speaking to Trahern here and uh, he says what I've been saying the whole time through the story. Uh, Planting a disruptive mesmer among us is far subtler than I expected from Zaitan. I shall not underestimate the dragon's wiles a second time. Oh, how I wish he'd voice acted that line. It's such a good one. Uh, does this mean then that I've regained the pact's confidence? You definitely have mine, he says. And once I've spread the truth about what happened here, you'll have uh, the pact again too. So hopefully people will listen to him. I, 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 know, I mean, we kind of did it in front of all these other soldiers. You didn't really help out, but they saw, right? We're not the only ones here. And I wonder if ArenaNet kind of did that deliberately, right? The idea that people were witness to Siska becoming a Risen. She probably shouldn't have gone so balls deep and attacked us straight away. You might consider that sort of poor writing, but hey. Um, I'll always regret shelling those soldiers, we say. I like this. It sticks with us, guys. Terex does not get fully over it. I understand. But do not let that regret consume you. You are misled by an illusion. And I'll make sure the families of the fallen know who's truly to blame. You know, it's great for Trahan to console us like this because just recently, even more recently, he had a bit of a tragedy for himself. If you remember the battle for Fort Trinity, he had to lock a ton of guys out um, of the keep to keep it defended. You know, he basically sacrificed a ton of people. He even says in the dialogue in that instance, mother, forgive me. And here he is saying, no, don't let that consume you. Uh, and we'll try. Thank you, Marshall. I'll see you back at Fort Trinity. Terex has had a really rough road here, uh, but maybe it's time to hang up the Lion Guard weapons or soon enough. What do you guys say? I'll certainly consider it. Um, so yeah, there you go. That is the end of this chapter. Now we need to be level 80. You'll notice I've actually sneakily, uh, between videos here, bumped us up to continue along with Temple of the Forgotten God. Definitely my favorite. Still has some kinks. Like, for example, that instance we just did a second ago. Driving the Risen out of Stentar Cannonade. Uh, right at the start, you can speak to Traherne and get his end of dialogue instance, uh, instance dialogue, which completely spoils everything that's about to happen. You know, they've all got their real kinks, uh, but hey, at least the, uh, the rest of it's pretty good in that one. All right, so let's get on and see what Traherne's got to say. He's given us a bit of a pep talk. Let's see him give everyone else one. Ah, oh, come on. Surely there's someone out there who will fight me. Come on, I'm warmed up. All right, Lady Norn. Everything in moderation, including moderation. You've been speaking to me constantly as I've been hanging around Fort Trinity these recent videos. They say you're too tired to fight me, the lazy grubs. Too tired, my yak. What about you? Do I scare you? Do I make you tired? I'll fight you. Ah, you set yourself apart from the crowd. Well done. Back see how you fight. The Norn are very cool. I really like her go-get-em attitude here. Ah, now that's what I call a fight. Yeah. All right, Wonder Woman. For too long, Tyria has suffered. We gather now with newfound purpose. Zaitan's servants storm our homelands. It is time to bring the battle back to Or. This tide will wash over Ara and cleanse the dragon's corruption. Together, we will prevail. Let the ship sail. Let the troops march. And let us find... Victory! A stirring speech to her. Commander, I wanted to follow up with you about the Siska incident. I've made my share of mistakes, even without mesmer trickery. Some things cannot be undone, but they can be mitigated. Warmaster Kason has been fully briefed, and her entire unit is aware of how you are all misled. That won't bring back their comrades, but knowing the truly guilty party was punished does soften the blow. There's someone I'd like you to meet. Okay, Tran. Well, hold on, though. I mean, brilliant speech, and thank you uh, with the Siska thing. But somebody mailed us while we were having a conversation there. Let's see what this is all about. Oh, 
Oh, it's Ritlock. Hey, dudes. Uh, Tribune Ritlock Brimstone catching up. How's it been going, man? You uh, weren't doing too good last we saw you. Kind of just blew off Kaith because you didn't want to be around Logan. And uh, vowed to return home to the Flame Legion as well, if I remember, who have been acting up. So what does he say? Commander. Bad news about the Pact Mortar Company. I suppose it's cold comfort to remind you that friendly fire incidents are commonplace during wartime. Look at this char perspective here. No, 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 that's fine. I understand. Right, okay. Probably won't do any good to tell your Pact superiors that either, but it is true. The important thing is that you got the Mesmer who was making all that trouble for you and your army. Destiny's Edge is still trying to make a go of it, but they're trying without me for now. I've had enough of childish accusations. I'd rather work with soldiers who understand their role and the stakes. I'll be in touch. So, uh, yeah, he's really still got a bit of a chip on his shoulder. Still doesn't seem interested. The specifics of what he's doing right now, unfortunately, Ritlock doesn't give us, which is a real shame. Uh, but, hey, maybe someone else can bail us out of that fire. Let's go speak to Traherne, uh, stop him waiting, and see what he's got going for us. Our visitor may cause alarm, so privacy is paramount. Right. Sire, it's now safe to reveal yourself. Ah, hello. Greetings, Marshal Traherne. As you've requested, I've come to honor my oath. Scouts have discovered a sixth temple in Orr, a lost shrine to a fallen god, hidden underwater in the Strait of Malediction. Abaddon, the human god of secrets, was cast out of Ara by the other deities, and his name was erased from history. Very little remained. Zaitan craves something inside that temple, so we must get there first. Sire will accompany you as a guide. I've yet to meet anything I couldn't overcome. All right, well, that's pretty clear. It's nice to meet you, Sire. We'll certainly check out this cast out human deity. Uh, I don't particularly believe in gods, but uh, sure, if, if Traherne thinks that that's good for the pact, then I'll stand with Traherne on this one. Uh, but you know, something's just occurred to me. Ritlock isn't the only person who's been mailing us, right? There is actually another correspondent we have frequent contact with from up north in the more called Tyrian areas. What about our Herald? And well, as it just so happens, we may have very recently got a mail from them, too. And they have given us the other side of the coin. So look at this. Your Herald, Logan and Ritlock, are fighting at the Citadel of Flame. <gasps> what? Hail, mighty hero. Well, we heard about this. We heard that Logan was seeking Ritlock out. I guess they've met. We have received news on the northeastern battlefront. Geheron Balefire, the leader of the renegade Flame Legion Char, has been driven back to the gates of his headquarters at the Citadel of Flame. A combined military force effort of the Vigil, Dermond Priory, and Order of Whispers are even now struggling to breach that gate. Look, the pack's up there, as we heard. Both Logan and Ritlock have been dispatched to that front, and given the way they feel about each other, I think they'll need somebody to keep them from killing each other. Naturally, I thought of you, though I don't know what's the greater danger, Geheron or the two former allies. Thanks, your Herald. And from what we hear about uh, Ritlock's estimation and summation of the situation, it's uh, he's definitely full on in denial. Now, last we heard, Logan was actually trying to build a bridge, and that's why he went there, why he's responsible for being dispatched there. But this doesn't sound very good at all, guys. So, before we deal with the Temple of the Forgotten of the Gods, it's time for another dungeon. Indeed, Tyrix's second dungeon in the most remote regions of Ascalon, far to the north of Fireheart Rise, beyond these horrible tar pools we got a glimpse at before. This is our last trip to Ascalon in the core series. This is it, guys. Our final journey into the volcanoes beyond. And last time Tyrix did a dungeon, he uh, got kind of battered and has come out with a peg leg. So let's see how scary this next one will be. I'll see you for that next time. Starting out as a medic, I remember stitching up our old drill sergeant. And he died. From one noise yeah. to another. He was about dead anyway. 
Does the best guy well have his strong arm, wild power prize, and he's right after he died. Don't know him. After I done the drill, Sergeant. See, I learned from my mistake with him. You were completely safe. Soldier, we're setting up a betting pool. You want a piece of the action? Yeah, we're betting on how Gaharan Balefire is gonna die. My money's on a sniper slug. I got blade to the gut. Oh, you're crazy. The guy's gonna get betrayed by one of his own troops. I want a piece of this. A hero's hammer's gonna take him down. Oh, sure. Go for the easy money. Pay the quartermaster and you're good to go. Tell you what, if I ever face Balefire, I'll kill him with my bare claws. Yeah, he's the weakest of the weakest magic users that ever lived. Death by claws more than he deserves. I don't care. His freakish cult will die when he does. I'll kill him. 